Uh, Mike, I'm sure probably everybody on this call knows, but Mike Stelzner is the founder and creator of Social Media Examiner, uh, Social Media Marketing World. Uh, and he might yes. know a thing or two about this. Well, not really. <laughs> Um, hey guys, um, yeah, so a peer.in is something that I've messed with that I think is kind of cool. Um, it's a good solution. When I first um, found out about Meerkat, my first Meerkat appearance was through a peer.in. So Dave Kirpin, um, who is a friend of mine, was doing a Meerkat and he was, it was called Lunch with um, Likeable Local, I think. And what the way it worked was the way he was able to get guests in is he had his cell phone up against a laptop screen and then he would encourage people to go to a peer.in and on the peer.in it's similar to this but it can be private if you wanted to and it just allows you to patch in people on video but what makes this different i think is the simplicity of it and the social integration side of it and and i'm definitely addicted and mark it was great to talk to you was it yesterday morning yeah yesterday morning yeah. about so is this your show or are you just messing around today yeah, well, both. Uh, <laughs> that's like we're, kind of what we're all doing on here. This is my first attempt at a real show. And I was telling the folks earlier, you know, and I've learned watching you, what you're doing, watching what Joel Com is doing, you know, some other people that are really going to town on this, Brian Fanzo. Um, I decided, like, I'm not, for now, I'm not going to try to create, like, another hangout show, which, you know, it's like, our guest today is Michael Stelzner, and he's going to talk at you for an hour. And you're going to listen. Right. But right. do what we're doing here, which is just set up something invite i was saying earlier like invite some people in that i know are smart and interesting to get the conversation going and just let it roll with people and that's what i'm enjoying here yeah and it's uh it, i've been experimenting with different formats like yesterday uh, morning was my most formal show that i've ever done where i actually had people lined up quote unquote as correspondents that i brought in and then i brought in the general audience and it worked really well um previous to that i've just done a what's your blab strategy kind of thing and just open it up for whoever would come in. And that turned out to be great too. But I think you said it earlier. Well, Mark, when you said the reason you're here is because people that you know and you trust are here. And that's what drew me in too. It's like, there's too many people in the social media world that are really embracing this thing and going really crazy at it. Um, my question is what's it going to look like a couple months from now? I mean, yeah, we're that's, just talking about that. yeah. What are your thoughts on that? Well, yeah, it's right. You know, right now it's always like the early adopter thing. Right? It's part of why we're spending time on this. Like we're all geeks who like to play with something new. Obviously that's part of it. But uh, there's also the fact that there's a saying that it's really easy now in, in ca even categories like, you know, social media and marketing, which are always going to be the you know popular categories early on and something like this. It's really easy to get your show at the top of the homepage still um, right now. And people see it and find it. That's if this keeps going the way it is, you know, in a few weeks, that won't be, that won't be the case. So, you know, you've got to do the hard, it'll be the people that do the hard work of sticking at it, who work to build an audience, build a loyal audience here that's going to subscribe to them, you notify, wants to see their shows, uh, you know, that uh, they're going to merge. But I, 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 after several days here, I think this has real potential. Don, are you checking out? Mark, if I can hear the timer going off, my dinner is ready. So the family will be <laughs> real happy if I take out the oven before it burns. Very nice to talk with you, Mark, David, Michael. Thank you, Don. Thanks for coming. Really appreciate it. We'll yeah. Then. You know, I look at this right now, um, Mark, as a platform that we bring our audience to first and foremost, rather than a platform where we, we find a new audience. While, while I think it's true that we will find new audiences here, I think those that will dominate the platform in the beginning are going to be those that have already got shows. And I think it's going to be those that have already got hangouts and those that have already got podcasts that are going to take their audience over to this platform in the beginning. But the good news is I think there's a great opportunity for those that are wanting to start their own show to kind of piggyback on top of someone else's show. So, for example, uh, it, yesterday, you know, I, I have a show that I'm experimenting with. And when once people like learn that there's a popular show in their category, if they did a show immediately after that show, they're going to get some spillover. Right. Because for mm -hmm. people that are that are hungry for more of that kind of content, they could essentially just, you know, when, when you're done with your show, they could take a look at the other shows that are going on and they could continue to feed that quote unquote addiction. <laughs> and I think that that could be very effective for some people in certain categories. Yeah, there, has, there has been that rollover effect. And also that, you know, right now what I'm seeing that's been amazing to me is, you know, the, uh, the following, I don't have any near the following like you or Joel Com or what that have, but I've been amazed by the, the number of followers I've built in just a few days. And most of that has come from just popping in on other people's shows and participating Anytime you do that, you're going to get people following you. Now you've got, you know, an audience that you can begin to build on here. 
the old school engagement strategy of actually participating. Yeah, David, are you, are you, uh, yeah, go ahead, Mark. I just want you to meet the guy below me here, David Kutcher. Yeah. He's one of my, uh, my mentors, one of my, uh, uh, what, what do they call it these days? The, uh, your, your group, your uh, posse, your, uh, um, the business world. It's like your, your mastermind group, mastermind group. He's my kind of oh, cool. mastermind group. Okay. Cool. He's, nice a, to meet he's, you, a, David. he's a brilliant uh, guy from Northampton, Massachusetts, does web design, but he's also really helps the people that he does web design for with their, with their overall marketing strategy. Uh, he's also a really deep Google Analytics guru. Awesome. 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 Um, I got to jump off for one minute, but I'm going to jump back on. Um, I just got a text message from my bookkeeper. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, priorities. I but I, but I'll, I'm going to jump back on. So you guys keep talking, and, I, and great to meet you, David. I'll be back in just awesome. Minute. All right, we'll see you soon. Hey, <laughs> hey Michael, welcome back. You know what's funny about this tech is is I lost my Wi-Fi signal and went right to uh, my LTE, and it kept me on. Isn't that intriguing? When oh, I, when I was on my oh computer. wow. And I was kind of because I was outside. I was outside, and I didn't realize it switched over. And um, I was like, "Oh, I'm taking up my mobile bill now." <laughs> You're saying now, Melissa is—is uh, your—is it your daughter, Melissa? Yeah, let me see. Yeah. If I can lower the Listen. volume on her iPad. Yeah, Miss Melissa's daughter is playing some like children's thing on her iPad. Yeah. We have we now have a soundtrack. Yes, I'm sorry. I think that's awesome. <laughs> I think that's totally awesome. She's two, and she's. Watching something. Oh no, she's playing ABC Mouse on her iPad. So sure Michael, Michael, while we got you here, I really appreciate. You know, I know you've been spending a lot of, of time on this, and, and you've got a few other things to do here and there. But uh, while we've got you on here, uh, mm -hmm. what do you think for for businesses are the, are the possibilities of this? Uh, what what would be the approach you would be telling people to take? Yeah. First, can you hear me? Okay. Is my yeah, audio coming great. through clear? Yep. I think that um, there's a couple angles here. Uh, first and foremost, community development. So if you've already got any kind of a following on a blog or a podcast or a hangout um, or any other medium, a YouTube channel, I think this is an opportunity for people to get to know the real person mm -hmm. and is um, a powerful business strategy because in the end, people you know, invest in who they know, like, and trust. So if you have something ultimately that you want to sell, you want the community to get to know the real you, and there's a big business play there. I think the other side is a content play. Um, you could easily create a show where one did not exist in your business. For example, you mm -hmm. could rapidly bring on people like what Joel Kahn is doing. You know, he has put his podcast to bed, but this has kind of given him a new opportunity to begin developing a new audience. And what he could do with that is if, this, if he's able to grow an audience, He's already got a big audience, but if he's able to grow an audience on this platform, alternative to a night show kind of thing, then he could ultimately get sponsors and uh, he could ultimately do, you know, more things with local events. So I think there's that. Um, I don't know. I mean, that's just the tip of the iceberg, but the way we're using it, Social Media Examiner, it, what we have planned is uh, for our conference, we are going to um, have regular on location shows where we will, for example, be down on the USS Midway Naval Aircraft Carrier and be showing people what the aircraft carrier looks like um, that are coming to the event. And we know that by doing that, we'll also get people that are popping in that are thinking of coming to the event. And when they hear from people that are excited about the event and those that are coming to the event, that'll help us. So we'll be generating content for those that are coming to the event, but we know for a fact that just by doing that, we're going, and, and because we know that so many of our community is here in Blab, that we will ultimately sell tickets to the event by just showcasing kind of what we're planning, what we're doing, and maybe occasionally bring it on one of the speakers that are going to be at the yeah, event. I was thinking. And for us, that's a big deal. You know, I, I've heard another thing that I've heard from people is uh, that, that they want to experiment with is using this as the kind of after party or after show for if you're doing a webinar, yeah, doing a hangout or doing something, you do a podcast. But hey, no, after the show, you're going to be on Blab for the next hour or two. Come chat with us. I'll chat. I think that's brilliant. Yeah, actually, um, I'm actually going to do something similar to, to what you're mentioning uh, because I'm going to go to the – eBay is turning 20. It's having it celebrating their, their 20th anniversary next month. Um, and I'm going to be over there. I'm an eBay seller. 
Um, so I'm actually going to be having a blab a few days before the trip with the organizers of the kickoff party. So they're going to come up, they're going to tell us everything that's going to go on out in the party. And then after I come back from the trip, I mean, it, depending on how time goes, I might even blab while I'm over there so that everything is still fresh and I can tell everybody what we're learning and what's going on. And then of course, as soon as we come back, I'll have another blab, have um, some of my friends that have been also during the event. Obviously now I know a lot of those people, so I want them to come on because there are a lot of them really big presences. You know, they have a lot of following and everything. So I kind of want to start my own show here on Blab around that, you know. Great. So, yeah, there's definitely a lot of potential for a lot of interesting things to happen on here. Yeah, it's, you know, it's the early days, the Wild West. People, we're going to see people do very creative. What did you say? I, I'm going to mute you, Melissa, just because we're getting sure. Yeah, sorry. More, but, sure. Um, it's, you know, people, it's going to be fun to see what people experiment with do. I remember the story I love to tell about the early days of Google Hangouts and the very early days uh, when there were just first Hangouts in air and it was only beta you had, you know, not everybody could use it. There was a woman named Daria Mutz who was a little local singer songwriter, just knowing her own town. She played in bars, really talented. She just started doing mini concerts on Google Hangouts every night. And this was before Hangouts on air. So it was just like, you could only have, 10 people at a time or nine other people could see it. Wow. Word began to spread and people would just pop in and out and she'd play for like four hours a night. And it got so big and so popular that Google reached out to her, made her one of the first people had to have access to uh, Google Hangouts on air. Uh, and it just took off from there. She got a recording contract. She tours the world today. So, you know, it's just, just using a platform. Nobody else was thinking about doing that. Use a hangout for a, a concert. Well, look at even this, Mark. You know, look at this platform. It's so new. It's in beta. Now, there's a lot of players in here. Melissa, you and I have been on a couple of blabs together, and uh, you know, I love all the information you've shared on, on your eBay stuff. You know, that's, that's stuff. I, I play in the e-commerce as well and just love the information that you provide and the kiddos in the backgrounds, too. So, I mean, it adds a little bit of a, you know, a difference to it. It's realism. You know, that's what it is. We've got kids. I got uh, my child just came in here and said, Hey, I, I got the dishes done. So, you know, <laughs> that's cool. It's real life. And that's the difference about this platform. I think that's different than Google Hangouts. It's, it's just a, it's another environment, but it gives us an opportunity to play with the environment and, and see what the environment's capable of doing it. And Mark, you, you started out the show on tips and tricks on how to use Blab. You know, and there's a lot of things that we've learned in the last few days that have just been developed really. absolutely yeah it's so 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 fresh that you know when we make a suggestion to the team then they're like listening to it and that's something that's unusual they're not they're not focused about their marketing yet they're focused on the platform first well, which i find very fascinating one of the things i said on one of the 27 shows i was on yesterday i can't remember which one was that this is uh and i think let's see if you agree with this michael this looks to me like you know, stuff at Google is built by engineers, right? And sometimes it's incredible because of that. And sometimes it looks like it was built by engineers. And you know, Google Hangouts has that kind of feel like it was feel like it was like somebody had a bunch of spare parts. Hey, uh, just real quick. Are you guys hearing what I'm hearing? I, I'm hearing a lot of voices breaking up. All right. Um, I'm going to mute Melissa again, just in case that's the problem. Uh, I have sorry to do that to you, Melissa, but we're getting a lot of background noise from you. Um, is that any better, Michael? I, I, I'm wondering if it's my connections because it sounds like, you know, that kind of like, um, are you on a cell phone? You're on a cell phone, right? I'm on my mobile, which is, but, That's but I've not normally had it on my mobile. I'm curious. Those that are here in, in the room, are you guys hearing? It's just me. Okay. Well, that's good to know. Yeah, we're my voice, good is my voice breaking up. Okay. No, huh. no, you're it, okay. might be yes. it might be because of the headphones. I've heard other people that had uh, interference with the headphones when they're on their mobile. Really? But just it, it's one of those buggy things. They're still in beta with the mobile side, but most of the time I found it's browser based. Um, so when I grab onto a blab, I'll go on my laptop. If I'm mobile somewhere, I need to move to a different room. I've tried it a few times on my even my Nexus Five has has been kind of like here and there. So I know that the guys are actually working on that. I've heard uh, I've been kind of jumped in on a couple of different blabs, and I heard. You know, the conversation from like Tristan and a few others that were 
you know, very hot on the subject. So that's something they're working in the pipeline so that that's going to be easier for everybody to jump on and have the clarity of the picture too. Uh, in the comments, Dot, Dot the Tech is saying that it's your, probably your Wi-Fi bandwidth because you said you did, and you did drop out, like your video dropped for um, a few moments a while ago. So, uh, yeah, I'm curious um, what happens. I'm going to go out of the app right yeah. now. I'm now out of the app. Has my video dropped? Yes. Okay. Funny enough, you can still hear my audio. Yeah. Yes. And now I'm coming back into the app. Is my video back? Yes. Yes. So, okay. So this is an interesting experiment. So it looks like yeah. if you, if you actually pop out of the app to respond to a text message or whatever, it sounds like it shuts off your video, but your audio still works. Huh. That was intriguing. What I was hearing was I was hearing William and I was hearing Mark, but not anymore, but I was hearing them kind of, I don't know how else to say it, but their voice is kind of coming in and out. But for the last minute, it wasn't. And I noticed now Jody's video is gone. Is that that's not yeah. just me, right? Jody's is gone. Yeah. But she's got a little okay. headset icon on there, so I wonder if we can hear uh, audio in a second from Jody. Jody, say something. Can you hear no. us? No, nope, she's not even speaking now. So. But see, that's the that's the fun part, though, Michael. Is basically it's it's it is a beta test, and and they're still well, going to out of this and um you, sir. because it's, it, i'm going to try to go on the desktop here and see if that makes a difference well what what i was uh well while michael's work playing there what, what i was starting to say exactly is, doing the testing you know testing the platform see what we can get away with and what we can't get away with and therefore just again playing you know and then we can bring that to our clients michael so what are you doing I'm, I'm on my laptop now which is okay. um hopefully going to resolve the issue here um but yeah, so I was listening to what you guys were saying, and I was also reading some of the comments. So the story that I read about the, the founders of this thing, and I also saw a Periscope from Carlos Gill, who was actually at uh, Meerkat HQ. And let me tell you what I saw on the Periscope. I saw very nice physical headquarters in the Bay Area with what looked like 20 or 30 Mac iMacs, like um, you know, 27-inch iMacs. So you can see there's a huge team of developers that are behind this thing. And I did a little research on um, on this company, and the founder of of, of um, Bebo sold this to America Online for like five hundred ninety million. And Bebo was a company, I think, out of the UK. I'm not sure exactly what the story was, but what ended up happening is America Online drove it into the ground, and it wasn't eight hundred fifty million. It was a lot less than that, according to my research. And what happened was. America Online messed the whole thing up, and it was bought back for $1 million, not $1 billion. So they ended up making a huge amount of money on this deal, and they bought it back essentially in a fire sale for about a $1 million. So they've regained um, all the intellectual property behind some of the original Bebo stuff. And I've had, um, I I've had conversations online with their CTO via Blab and also in private sessions and stuff, and they're actively iterating. Um, for example, there's a current bug where – if you link to a blab that's on the record, uh, that's been recorded, but you do it from Facebook app or from a mobile device, it won't show the playback. Instead, it'll just say this blab has ended. So literally, the CTO found out about this last night, and he hacked together a fix that night just to show you how fast and responsive these guys are. And he said he's going to get back to it on Monday. So um, these guys are listening. They're very responsive. They want to make this work. I've been told that they want this to be an alternative to television. And there's a reason why they're not going to do private rooms, right? Because they want this to be public because it's in the best interest from a branding perspective to essentially um, get as much exposure about Blab as possible. I've also heard from um, their social gal, and I'm forgetting what her name is, Brittany, I think, that the biggest Blab they've ever had is about 200 some simultaneous users. So it um, doesn't mean they can't do bigger. I know people are behind the scenes looking to do a thousand person live blab um, coming up soon. I don't know if that's going to happen, but um, I'm not even sure if the technology can handle it. But it's intriguing to see that um, unlike, you know, some of the other technologies that we love, these guys are rapidly iterating and um, it's pretty impressive. I heard one of them say uh, somewhere they quoted as saying that uh, the average person on here right now, the last few days, is spending 62 minutes on this platform. Uh, that's, back television. that's, you know, that's, that's approaching television time. Uh, and, and I've heard, you know, they always say that you're, you're doing your branding right if people are saying back to you what you thought your branding message was. I've heard so many people in the last few days say exactly that, say like, this has replaced television for me. You know, and 
I get a night. I don't, I'm not turning on the TV anymore. I'm coming on Blab. What's on Blab? What's next? Who's, you know, who's got a great show? Jen, well, you take, Blab even, you take even Larry that just jumped in the show and he's, he's a chef. Um, Larry, good to see you. Hey, well, you know, yeah, hey, think, hey, did you bring any food, Larry? I just ate. <laughs> None for us. Yeah. Uh, but I've been listening to what you guys were saying. And um, yeah, they're, they're, it's a small team. It's only 12 people on the team. And uh, like what Mike was saying, they are very, very responsive. I guess with a, with a small team like that, you have to be responsive. Um, but at the end of the day, they get it done. Um, I usually have something on a Friday, which is like uh, a happy hour mixed uh, cocktail fun show with the main and uh, we have a mixologist and we just have fun and mix a cocktail in a blab and 20 minutes and we, we're out and we invite people in something to do this uh, it's fantastic almost like what chef Dennis has been doing with his show yeah, and actually so chef, chef has a more uh, polished um, you know he's using two cameras like what we didn't hang out um but i don't think it's it's fitted for like the format i did with with hangouts with with my with my cooking shows mm -hmm. um because of the fact it's only four squares and like mark was saying you know the, the, at a long dinner table you know you you're only talking to people close to you and this this makes sense for 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 what it does um I don't think um, me porting my my cooking show on here would make any kind of sense. So I'll just keep it on on Google Plus and do the the fun, short, quick things here, like the mix mixing show, the mixology show, that's whatever. Great example. And I think I think that's a great point, Larry, because like at Stone Temple, this is what we're thinking about right now. We what used to be regular you know, beer shows. We just found that, you know, while we had a very loyal audience there, they weren't our target audience. And so, we, you know, they, they were taking a lot of effort for not reaching our target audience. So we dropped out of that. And we've been investing heavily in the last year in produced video. So we, we've got our own studio. We're doing regular videos that, we, you know, that are highly produced, great special effects, all, of, you know, all that kind of stuff, answering people's questions, putting out that kind of content. But this gives us the opportunity now to say, like, we don't need to do the same thing here. We can do something. Right. We can do something different and interact and engage with our audience in a little way. And Michael was saying earlier the value of just getting that personal connection with with people in your audience. Uh, that's that's what I talk about at conferences now. That's one of my main topics. Is just the, you know that value of personalization. I call it PBRs, personal brand representatives. And when you've got somebody in your company in your brand who uh, people like and trust out on social media, they trust at conferences, they listen to, they read their content. You know, that reflects back on your brand. Well, in the same way, participating in something like this, when people get to see like, hey, you know, that Larry, on your, how, how do you say your last name, Larry? Fonillier. Thank you. <laughs> Larry Fonillier, he is a, he's a likable, personable guy. You know, I, I, I've been reading his recipes and stuff for years, but like, wow, now I'm, you know, I'm really going to be into him because uh, I got to connect with him. Yeah. And you, you, this, this reminds me of um, Hangout events with comment tracker mm -hmm. but this is you know connected to 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 the twitter so now you you get your, your twitter followers come right in here and interact with you that's whereas right. and and with with google plus, with google plus you, you only have your, your google plus crowd there which is okay but it's not open up to everybody this now i can now get my and i'm telling you since i've been on here my Twitter followers has increased. Me too. I, I, Me too. too. That's about eight percent. About eight percent. But eight percent is, is better than, than than zero because you know. Well, for example, just in the show recently, I've probably had at least ten people I don't know. Not they're not following me on Facebook, LinkedIn, or Google Plus. Right. Good and, point. Hey guys, we've we've got uh, Brittany from um, uh, from I'll, I'll in. If we can get her in the show, that would be awesome. Uh, Brittany, if you really yeah, let, let me let me let. Let, let me jump out, guys. Thanks, Lori. Good to see you. Good, good to see everyone. Okay. Probably everybody wants Brittany. I'm sure she probably, uh, I don't know if she gets a day off. It'd be intriguing to, to find that out. I bet you she doesn't. 
Yeah, um, I mean, that's the life of a community manager. I'll tell you one of the great things about, about that I've discovered about Blab is I've discovered people that I think are really cool that I would have never discovered. For example, um, Nina, who's here in the room, um, mm -hmm. I, uh, I think she's I socially Nina. Um, I, I've begun to discover like, wow, this gal really is articulate. She seems to know what she's talking about. And I think it's a great way uh, for you to kind of just be present in some of these shows. And, you know, it's all about getting to know people. Brittany, do you ever get a break? Yeah. Uh, kind of. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> I'm at work right now. <laughs> um, We're just talking about how much we love your platform. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm glad because um, all your love keeps us alive. That's all well, we get. Well, you've created something amazing here already. And that's, you know, people can't, we can't stop talking about it. And the and part of that that we've been talking about is people love you know that you've been around you know Sean's been around the accessibility um, you know there's you are doing you are living as Google people say like you're eating your dog food you know you are you are using this in the way you want people to use it and they're seeing that and loving it for it. Yeah, uh, definitely. I I had a lot of fun. I don't know if you jumped in this morning. Um, I did like a co-host finder blab. So we're working on matching people up so we can get more content created. Cause like nice. you can probably tell already that um, being in a blab by yourself is not ideal. <laughs> um, it feels weird and lonely and the spots are still there waiting for someone to jump in. So it's not catered to make you feel comfortable alone. <laughs> um, Brittany, uh, you're a designer, right? Did you design those cool little I don't know if that's an owl or whatever that is. Did you design that little blab character? I, I did that, yes. Awesome. It's really cool. Is it an owl? Yeah, it's an owl with a space helmet on. A space helmet? Yeah. Is that what that is? I thought it was yeah. a circle around. Yeah, it's a space helmet, but like he used to, he has a body, but then we like, and there used to be stars in the background of everything. So we lost the space element. Maybe we'll get it back. I'll fight for it. Maybe that's why we can't get out of Blab is because we're in space. <laughs> yeah, well, there's like another side of Blab that we're working on right now. And it's like uh, the other dimension that there was a Blab asking if uh, if Blab was alien technology. <laughs> it was only one person in it, so I had to jump out. I was a little scared, but it was a good idea. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I want to wander into that one either. I'd be a little scared. It, it could have been an alien. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh yeah, so, so that was the original um, owl I made a long time ago, and he was like flying through space before he was colored. So then we just kind of reversed it. Now he has color on his body. <laughs> yeah, people are asking um, about the origin story on um, on you guys. Can you share a little bit about that? Um. Yeah. So Blab is owned by Bebo, which is the real. Yeah. Okay. So. <laughs> When we bought Bebo back, we started working on um, a new Bebo. So we we're making a chat app, and I was actually brought on the team to do character design. And it was very fun and crazy, and eventually just, like, wasn't taking off, um, like, picking up the way we thought it would. And we we're like, okay, this isn't working. Um, we have to we have to take a moment, like, uh, our – our CEO and CTO, Sean and Furkan, um, actually kicked us out of the office for two weeks and told us to make something we're passionate about. Wow. And we came back and pitched it. And I remember Furkan's line was just like, well, I don't even want to pitch what we were working on. We should be doing this. And after that, it was just like full speed ahead. Like we didn't look back. We just kept working on Blab and that's kind of why it's been through so much and evolved so quickly um, within original concept. What's the dot .im stand for? Just out of curiosity, is there a meaning behind that? We we actually worked on an old project um, when we were like Monkey Inferno. So we were doing like an idea kind of lab, um, an incubator. Um, and we had this project called Blab and it was a video messaging app, but it ended up being a little too similar in features to Snapchat. Mm. So the truth of the story is we had the domain and we're like, you know what? That's easy. That actually fits what we just built. And we're like, oh, how convenient is that? We should just use that domain. 
So Someone it was a bit of a. You're asking why is it an owl? How did you pick an owl? Um, so I was thinking of like animals that would be um, reliant on conversing. So owls are very conversation heavy and they rely on it a lot. So using communication to hunt at night and that was, it, it turned into like, okay, well now it works. Like everyone's a bit of a night owl and stays on blab all the time. I think there's multiple reasons, but it did start out with, okay, we want to make a conversational platform. What animal kind of focuses on communication and, and I was like another, oh and us staying up all night thing. talking to people it kind of works because we're up all night interacting and engaging with people we would have never met around yeah. the world and in yeah. another two weeks we're all going to have owl eyes yes oh, <laughs> <God>. <laughs> oh, definitely oh my god so I have a question for you Brittany yeah so the culture seems to be that of a flat organization where you all can make decisions on the fly and kind of share what you want is that the kind of culture it is? Or can you tell us a little bit about the culture of the company? Um, so we're all um, very much on the same page of our vision for Blab, which is helpful. Mm -hmm. um, we, we know where we see it going, where we want to go with it. And because we're all using the platform all the time, we all kind of get these um, product ideas that would help it go in the direction that we envision. Um, we're getting a lot of user feedback. We're constantly iterating on things. And we tend to agree on every week, it's very easy to say, what is the most important thing that we focus on? And like right now, stability. Um, stability is the most important thing that we focus on. Um, we're also doing um, replays so we can focus on that and make sure we have um, a great embed feature. These are all things that we think are the next step um, to improving everyone's experience. So it, it's pretty easy. We can all pitch ideas. Like we say dumb stuff all the time. We have um, we have a channel just for like random ideas. We're like, okay, random tiny idea. And <laughs> no one even has to address it. But it, if you think an idea is important or a feature is so important, you pitch it to the team. Like, why is it important? How would it benefit us? How long does it take? We try to do things that are, um, they take, a small amount of time with the biggest impact. So right. focusing on that kind of corner of our grid is how we move quickly. And I have one more question. Um, you said that you're kind of aiming, or I think I heard Mike um, uh, kind of explain that we're aiming to have this be kind of like our TV. What would you like to see more of from us? Because I know I've been setting up interviews and you know co-hosting and things like that, but what is it that you would love to see us do from the user standpoint? So I think the best thing people do is when they're passionate about something. You want to see people who are passionate about something have a discussion. So I don't want to see people talk about tech if they hate tech. Like, that would not be fun. I mean, unless they passionately hate tech. Then right. it's different. But, like, if you don't care about something, um, don't talk about it. So I think as long as everyone's talking about what they love or what they hate and they're just, like, keeping – their passion there, it's entertaining. Like you want to watch people interact when they care about the topic. Right. And as long as we just get people talking about what they love, it's great. I think the more like casual conversations are really fun, like and addicting, like less structured. I kind of like just listening to people in their like raw moments when they're like just shooting the shit and like talking about <laughs> stuff. I think it's like this new insight, like we've never had that before. Right. I'll jump out. I know there's a lot of people in here. I just want to jump in. Thank you so much for the platform. Thank you, Mike um, and Mark, for having me. Bye, you guys. I'm so glad you popped in. Great to meet you. I hope to see Thank you more again. You know, it, it, it's intriguing because um, uh, as a um, both a consumer of content and as a producer of content, I find myself kind of randomly popping in during the day to see if there's anything that's of interest to me when I would be taking my normal breaks, you know? Looking, yeah. for, looking for a diversion. And I think that's why it's probably in the best interest of Blab to see a lot more people doing quote unquote shows across all the various categories so that this becomes the diversion that people go to um, in the same way that they find other diversions like picking up the phone and calling a friend. And um, I'm not seeing it there yet, but I'm seeing a lot of it in the marketing category. And I think it's because so many of the marketers are rapidly evangelizing it. 
But for example, I, I can notice that um, there's not very many shows on and I could do a spontaneous show and then all of a sudden pff, they all show up. And yeah. it's like, it's like, it's like, we're just kind of every little while looking to see, okay, who's on there that I know. And if they're on there and I know them, then I'm going to pop in in a second. So I would imagine part of your strategy, Brittany, is to bring on, is to, is to hopefully get people to evangelize across lots of different categories and then have all these great, um, you know, rich discussions, not just stupid discussions. <laughs> you so, know what I mean? So um, naturally in a new product, um, the first people to jump on are um, social media enthusiasts mm -hmm. and they are the pioneers on the platform. They see something new. They want to talk about it. That's what they're interested in. And that's what they're passionate about. So it's only natural that they're the first people to hop on and um, kind of have a lot of the discussion here. Um, do I think it'll be that way forever? Absolutely not. I think everyone is starting to um, think about how they can have a show. Like everyone secretly wanted to host your own show. And like, I mean, I say everyone, I just mean myself. Like <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just pushing my um, beliefs on everyone, but I think we're starting to watch some other shows um, come up and form their own brand. And we have a lot of talk shows of food. We have a huge music industry of their like, the Blab Stars Live coming on and comedians telling jokes and having open mic night. There's a lot of awesome things starting to develop and it is a bit of a slow process, but it is, it's like we're all here for the beginning of it. So it's only natural that um, social media talk is the first thing to happen because this is a new social media platform, so. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm Pardon me for jumping in, but hi, Mark, Mike, and, and Brittany. Hi, Ron. Uh, what I found interesting, I've, I've been on quite a few blabs as far as watching and, and being, a, you know, jumping in the seat. But the other day, I think it was the same day, Mark, you did your first one also. I got on and I figured, I'm just going to see what's going to happen, how, I, how this works by, by, by starting my own blab. And before I knew it, there was a bunch of people that just got in the, in, you know, and, and jumped in a couple of my friends, uh, Elaine Niebuhr ding, and she helped me get going a little bit till I felt a little more comfortable. But all of a sudden these people started coming in and it's like, where are they coming from? I, I just wanted to see how this thing worked. And it's like, they're, you know, their people are watching. So I'm going to do my own show this, this coming week or my own blab. I, I keep saying show because I'm used to saying that from the, the hangout thing. That's what this is really though. Yeah. Well, I guess you're, you're, you're right. And, um, and I'm going to, you know, do it later on this, this coming week, but, uh, I'm, I just kind of fell in love with this and, and it, it's a platform that I just related to. Um, and, uh, that's, that's my feelings on it. And it, it's so easy to get in and, 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 uh, and partake and whether a guest or to start your own. <laughs> and see there folks, even somebody who works for the company can get, Hey, 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 I'm going to, I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to blame it on something else. I was incognito and I tried to, um, command W an incognito window and it just shut right. the other one. I was like, what? Right. Okay. Not a, not a blab problem. Folks, blab is working fine. Nobody Blab's fine, you guys. Nobody remain calm. Um, Tyler Anderson was asking about any insight of who's using blab. I mean, I'm guessing it is mostly the marketers right now. Um, but I don't know. I don't know what he's where he wants to go with that question because that's such a broad question. But you know, it, it does seem to be an older demographic, right? I mean, it doesn't seem like I'm seeing a lot of young kids on here, um, which is actually not a bad thing. Yeah. So um, it is. It does seem to be a bit more, um, at least college and older. Um, the community is based on like having um, intelligent conversations. <laughs> I don't want to say like kids aren't intelligent. We do have some like the smartest kids in here like on blab who are like 13 years old who will, will make anyone feel stupid but um it is a place for discussion and you tend to see people who have more to discuss on the platform right now um and i, I don't know if you guys tuned in and saw um uh rob tyson and spencer pratt talking in their podcast um so they they just brought that over so they're bringing like this reality show talk, this like new kind of podcast that we hadn't seen before. And that's pretty exciting because it's a whole new um, community of people. Like that includes my mom. Like my mom heard about it. She's like, 
like Rob is on Blab. And I was like, you know who that is? She's like, oh my God. Like I, I listen to it all the time. I was like, oh my God, my mom's a nerd. Um, <laughs> but like, it's starting to open up this huge audience and it's like, okay, that's awesome. We're starting to see new content. They're just testing. They're testing things out. It's, it's awesome. And this morning when I did like a, our little host finder thing, I, I just set up a Twitter account. So um, when people are interested in a topic, I know there's other people. They're not the only one in the world who's interested. So I want to um, start working on matching those people up. And so we can start seeing new content because I know it's brewing in everyone's mind. Like, I think there's going to be a huge um, cooking show, like demographic on Blab. I think it's just something that's going to happen because everyone, I don't know. I think my mom's like that too. Everyone has this nice kitchen. They put, they prep food in like glass bowls and it's like, no one's even watching them. It's just like this nice little thing you do. I think it'll be big. Oh, it's going to be big. And I think, I think the fact that um, anyone can have the opportunity to join who has the gumption to push the button is I think what makes it really cool. And the fact that you allow the host to control that or not control that it's kind of like, uh, it's easier to push that button than it is to pick up an 800 number and call into a nationally syndicated radio show. Definitely. And, and um, it's not everyone who's going to feel comfortable to push that button. <laughs> but in the beginning, you know, it's going to hopefully be those that understand that they should be wearing microphones and stuff. And it, it seems like the podcasting community, frankly, has been one of the big adopters. You know, I know Rob has got a big podcast and and I, I, I'm very active in the podcasting community and I've been evangelizing to the podcasting community. Hey, have you guys thought about using this as a way to augment your show? Meaning you can still do your show. Like uh, last week I did the first time my podcast show exactly the way I normally do it. But then afterwards we, we brought people in and before the show, I said, Hey, welcome everybody. This is how we do our show. And, um, you know, it worked pretty well. Um, and I think that the podcasting community is looking for a way to interact with their audience because normally when you listen to a podcast, it's been pre-recorded and there isn't a very easy way to interact with the host of the show. So yeah. I think you're going to see a mass adoption of those people. And the good news is they cover all the categories that you already have. Yeah, yeah. which is wonderful. I think it's um, it's time that uh, podcasting is open up to um, just everyday people. Like right. I, I've always wanted to do one. Um, do I have time to produce one, uh, edit one? find a guest, not necessarily. So that's kind of where it goes. I can record one, but I don't think anyone's heard any of the podcasts I've recorded because that's as far as I go. And this, and is, now, a good point. Yeah. this is a good point to let people know who weren't with us earlier, which you may not know, if you are doing a show on the record as we are now we're recording a show, mm. when the show is over, you not only get a video recording like you do with Google Hangouts, you get a separate audio recording. And that was so brilliant, Brittany. <laughs> that's going to bring the podcasters here because if I can do this live, you know, and have interesting people on here, and then I already have the audio file, there's a little bit of editing on, I've got my podcast, you know, you've saved me a ton of work. We're thinking about you guys. We're only going to make it better for you. I you promise. Know, yeah. I will <laughs> tell you, I will tell you though, uh, for those of you that are recording the videos, um, I did do a show yesterday morning and, um, you may want to figure out another way to record the video. Those of you doing a show who have the right equipment just as a backup, because my show yesterday was very well received, but halfway through the show, some of the video popped out and some of the audio popped out on the playback, which was a real bummer. That's the first time I've seen that happen after doing five shows. But, um, you know, and I, we all need to understand this is beta, right? This isn't perfect yet. But um, I think next time I will probably do a video capture on my local machine in addition, just to be sure. Because if you are producing something that you think will be very important for you, um, it would be a real bummer if it was awesome and it didn't all work. And, and, and it did work fine for the host, but it was some of the guests that came in and out that for whatever reason got a little strange. That, and I've already reached out to for, for Quan or whatever. For no, I think I reached out to him or maybe I didn't. I don't know. Um, so, so everyone's aware that like, okay, um, the biggest thing we have to work on, on the, this platform, the biggest thing we could fail on is if it doesn't work, right. so we're like, okay, it needs to work for cons in here. He's listening. Cool. Um, so we're working on stability and we're also focusing on our replay ability to make sure you don't have those experiences. Um, it isn't beta, um, but we are moving very quickly in those directions because we want the experience for podcasters and the people using it right now um, to be awesome. And what, yeah, Furcon is everywhere. Oh, sorry. 
what I found interesting, I what I do, there's a ton of videos on YouTube about engraving on glass and metal and so forth. But there's not a lot on any other platform. And so I, I might be the first one to do engraving on glass here on Blab and, and show people what I do. But it uh, it's it's been a, a hard thing to do and to uh, to get to people to watch, uh, except for something like YouTube, being able to do it live and talk to people and, and ask questions. And the other day I held up some of my work in, in front of my camera and I was amazed at how the quality came across. So I'm I'm very excited about doing it later on this week. Yeah, I, I'm stoked as well. Like I think it's I think it's great to let um people know who are interested in your community already, like, hey, I'm gonna be doing this live. Like you have a chance to ask questions and I'm just gonna answer on the fly and give you my best response. So I think that kind of interaction is awesome. It it humanizes people. So quick question. When, when, when you're done recording a session, if you, if there's chat that still goes on sometimes. Um, is there a way, for example, like I, I think I reached out to slash at help or whatever. Do you see that only during the live session or do you actually see that stuff after a session is done? Just out of curiosity, Brittany. Um, when you add mention someone to come in. Yeah. And they're like, after we're done, you know how you can still have chat. Like once, once this, once this thing ends, yeah. Um, and he's got a recording. You can still have the chat going on in the sidebar. So if if I were to at tag you, for example, or help or whatever, mm -hmm. would you guys see that, or is it really only during the live session that you guys are monitoring that? Um, we we would see it if our browsers are open. So that's um when the desktop notifications come in. Um, we'll get gotcha. it. Gotcha. Okay. Cool. So Just it, it's always working. <laughs> Cool. So by the way, since this is my first recording, how do I stop it properly? I mean, how do I end it? So okay. I just so, click on that thing. So like the most, uh, everything's pretty intuitive until we get to how to end it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I guess we're like kind of encouraging you not to end it, which is great because no one ends their blabs anymore. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, see a, I see a pause button and I see recording with the red light. Yeah. So um, the pause actually doesn't end it. Um, it'll be done once... You can usually pause to end it and that'll stop the recording, but the official recording will send to you at that end moment when everyone's off camera. So if you want to officially end it, you can kick everyone off and then exit. And then it's going to say like this blab is ended. And then the recording should send to you in like five minutes. It is amazing. I will attest to how fast it is. It's, it's... Are, you, are you supposed to get an email when the recording's ready? Yes. Uh, yes. Oh, somebody earlier was saying, well, Anna Stevenson was saying that, uh, that she's not been getting the emails. But so there, there might be in your, they might be in your spam folder, or if you're not, you can also just um, reach out to us and let us know what, um, yeah, if you've unsubscribed, you won't be getting the emails, but if there's something you want that you have recorded, just, um, let us know the name of your blab and, um, email us and we can, forward that email to you, but you might need to resubscribe to the emails. I have to take my daughter to the park, but um, I just <laughs> want to say, Brittany, it was awesome to uh, meet you on camera. Mark, thanks for having this show and how cool that you've got um, Sean here in the chat and uh, for Khan, I think I keep getting his name wrong. <laughs> I apologize, but it's so cool that your team here is here on a Sunday, you know what I mean? And interacting with everybody. I think that's awesome. So. Uh, keep up the great work. I'm going to continue to evangelize it. Just so you guys know, we're writing about it this week on Social Media Examiner. So we have awesome. an article uh, authored by Joel Com coming out this week, and we have another article coming out the following week. And um, we also created a video, a marketer's guide on Blab, which you can find on my profile. Um, and I'm, we're going to embed that in our article. So we are doing a lot to try to let the community know about this platform because we're believers in what you guys are doing. And uh, we want to continue to see marketers adopt it because we think it is a game changer. So thank it, you. For, that's for super awesome. If you, if you need like headshots of the team, <laughs> like um, we might need to stage that and then you can like just put our, our headshots, like an article about us. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Don't write that. Don't write that article. But yeah, cool. that's, that's super awesome. I think it's important that everyone just keeps, um, if you believe in it, you just do the one thing that helps the most is um, word of mouth. That's the one thing our products we didn't work on, we worked on before didn't have. Um, so 
it feels feels right this time. All right, I got to run. Thanks, Mark, for hosting. Michael, thank you yeah. so much for joining us. Everybody really enjoyed it. We'll see you soon. There, Brittany, so wonderful. And this is this is like, you know, again, I, I'm not here to bash Google. I know you won't do that. You're smart about that. You don't bash other product. They've still got great things going on over here. But I was in the early adopter mm-hmm. community of Google Plus. I was in the second day. I was there for every product from the beginning. And those of us who are in that community remember those days when Google Plus was like a startup because you could talk to, to Vic, you could talk to Brian, you know, all these people, they were coming into chats, they were coming into text, it was so accessible and that was great. You guys are doing that now and it's so smart because it, 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 you know, it makes those of us that are playing with this all the more wanna be involved. We know that this is only gonna get better because we've met you now and we know how terrific you are. We're not doing it from a product point, we're like addicted to talking to you guys. <laughs> So, <laughs> isn't it great to create something though that, that you yourself love and want to use? I mean, what yeah, you do job, all right? the time. I'm like, I stopped watching all my stupid crime TV shows. <laughs> I'm like watching blabs in my house, and I'm just like, I I have to go to the office. I need better internet. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like here forever. So you you heard it here, folks. Blab is addicted to blab too. So you know. It's- <laughs> Hi, Tony. Hi. Uh, Hi, Tony. Thanks for joining us. Did you have a question or something? Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, this is my first time. Well, we're hearing you on, at least I'm getting a serious delay between your video. It's a delay. There there might, internet, uh, your internet connection might be a little slow, which Mm. is why it's, but I can hear you. Okay, well, it's nice to meet you guys. Yeah, you too. Where'd you? Nice to meet you. Go ahead. Where'd you hear about Blab from? Oh, I, I'm a social media consultant, so I've been hearing about it and just haven't jumped on yet. I'm awesome. excited, though. It's pretty cool. <laughs> no better time to jump in than a room full of 50 people. I, I know, I know. <laughs> I didn't know what I was getting myself in. <laughs> but I'm excited. Oh, I'm so to have you. Yes, me too. Thank you, Brittany. Hi, Jackie. Hi, everyone. Hey, Jackie. Hi. Welcome. Yeah, Mark, I was really intrigued about what you were saying about Google Plus because I was an early adopter as well. I'm actually the most followed Australian on Google Plus, well, based in Australia. But uh, I'm just wondering where you see it headed in terms of Google Hangouts on Air versus Black. Like, do you see them complementing each other or uh, one overtaking you? I think so. I, I think the people that have an audience on Google Plus Hangouts will probably continue that. Sure. I know the people we've been talking to earlier this evening were saying that. Got okay. established shows over there. They'll they'll keep it going. Yeah, uh, yeah. you know, and, and it's and it has some different features that this doesn't have. Sure. Great. I think this is um, this is just where now I want to come and hang out. Uh, yeah. Was, you know, terrible to use their term. For, <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to come here and blab. Um, <laughs> but uh, th- that's what I'm having for. Like like you know, we were talking. Brittany was talking earlier about. Uh, them you know, wanting to see people come forward with creative kinds of shows and that will happen. And I'm sure I will do that eventually too. But for right now, I've decided, I've got a list beside me here of like 15 different show ideas. But I'm not going to uh-huh. do this for a while. I'm just going to do this for a while. Okay. Because I'm, I'm, I'm connecting yeah. with people, I'm meeting people, they're meeting me, they're getting to know me, building audience here. Yeah. And then it gives me time to think about what is that, those people that I've gotten to meet and know, what will entertain them, what will on them, what will they want to tune in to watch? And I'll create that. Sure, sure. Are you finding a lot of a, is everyone finding much of an audience like uh, hopping onto Blab through your own uh, kind of like share of, of this platform or? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think Australia is a little bit behind in terms of like, uh, tech, cause I'm based in Australia. Um, a little bit behind in terms of like uh, new platforms and that sort of stuff. I've been trying to tell everybody, hey, go on to Blabs, connect with me there in my newsletter. I might get maybe one person do that, you know. It's a little bit sad. <laughs> I think we're getting faster and faster at joining things. Um, people, yeah. are, people aren't as scared anymore and they want to find out what the latest, greatest thing is and jump on, sure. at least here in the yeah. U.S. We're- we're getting, Brittany, we're getting a lot of questions, of course, in the, in the chat that we're not getting to, but. Oh, I'm trying to answer them in the text. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you for doing that. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm not even keeping up with everything, so I didn't see all that. Um, people are asking about the Android app, and I know you're getting that a lot. Can you give us any update on that? Um, so right now we're making sure we have a stable platform on the web, 
before we branch out to multiple platforms because um, we don't want to have some crap, like crappy version on three different devices when um, we could focus on stability and make sure our product is solid on the web before we branch out. So our, our CTO and um, a lot of our team is actually Android lovers and users. So they promise it's going to be great. <laughs> Um, they develop very quickly. Um, we just need to make sure we are stable on the web first because we don't want people to have a bad experience on the web, an okay experience on Android, a decent experience on iPhone. We want it to be solid. Yeah, I can promise people um, they did an update, people on Android, it's worth the wait. They did an update this weekend of the iPhone app Well, that got pushed out this weekend, and it was an amazing step up. Uh, you know, I was using the iPhone app earlier in the week, got the update yesterday morning. Brittany, that the iPhone app is beautiful. I mean, it doesn't have, of course, it doesn't have everything that the desktop has. It will. <laughs> it will, and it has a lot of it, and it's 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 a beautiful app. It's fun to use. So, um, you know, Android folks, it'll be worth the wait if they're trying to work hard on something good. Yeah, it, it's definitely great. We have um, we have a small team of developers, so it's they they're working like three people each at least, like. <laughs> It's a hungry, a hungry, nimble team. All right. Um, it was great talking to you guys. I am going to hop off so I can get some, some offline work done. And then I'll see you guys around. Brittany, we love you. Thank you so much.